Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good day, Kristen Shaw. Thank you for being with us. And Meredith Kahn, thank you for being here to talk about canine osteoarthritis, which is really a shock to me. But this is on National Dog Day, so this is a, a appropriate subject, lady. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. I'm going to start with you, Kristen. First of all, can you define what uh, canine osteoarthritis is? Yeah, so osteoarthritis, we also call it OA, is a degenerative condition of joints that starts developing in young dogs, often in the first year of life, and then progresses as they age. It's almost always secondary to a degenerative or developmental genetic condition such as hip dysplasia or elbow dysplasia, which means that certain breeds of dogs are at a greater risk of developing arthritis. That includes Labradors, German Shepherds, Golden Retrievers. One other big risk factor for developing arthritis is if your dog is overweight. So, but we hear osteoarthritis in people, are we talking the same disease, kind of? It's, it's very similar. One of the biggest differences is that in humans, the disease typically just kind of comes on with age. It's, we consider it to be primary arthritis. In dogs, osteoarthritis is, again, almost always secondary to that underlying cause. But ultimately, what's going on in the joint is very similar between dogs and people. And a lot of the same treatment options apply to dogs and people. Okay. I'm going to switch to Meredith. Meredith, we're on National Dog Day. And bringing these uh, challenges up front. Is that important on National Dog Day? Absolutely. Um, as Dr. Kirkby Shaw mentioned, this is a very, very common disease uh, in dogs. Actually, one in five dogs suffer from osteoarthritis. And there's lots of different options that you can take, um, or that there's lots of different options out there for dogs uh, to manage and treat the disease state. Christy, what are some of the signs of spotting it before we even get to treatment? We have to spot the disease or the problem. Absolutely. So what you'll want to look for, especially in a young dog, is limping or an abnormal gait, especially after play, or just seeming to be stiff after getting up from rest. As dogs age, the signs that you're going to look for more are ones that you'd consider just general signs of aging or your dog slowing down. That actually might be a sign that your dog's in pain. So not wanting to go for walks, not wanting to jump into the car, trouble going up and down stairs, or just not getting up to greet you when you come home. All of those could be signs of pain associated with arthritis. Meredith, on National Dog Day, you know, we got National Take Your Dog to Work Day, now we got National Dog Day. What are some of the things that we can do to, one, help alleviate their pain with this disease, but also be good pet owners? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. Um, early intervention and detection here is really key. So um, working with your veterinarian, you can discuss options such as dietary changes for weight management, uh, in addition to medication like adequate canine, which is also referred to as polysulfated glycosaminoglycan. And adequate canine is the only FDA-approved injectable disease-modifying osteoarthritis drug for dogs. And it's proven to proactively treat the disease state and not just mask signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis, which really differentiates it from other options out there to manage the disease like over-the-counter supplements and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for pain. I would just add that it's also really important for dogs with arthritis to have regular low-impact exercise. It's a misconception that dogs with arthritis should not have activity. We really do want them going for a walk every single day. And that remember that adequate canine is a prescription drug only, so only your veterinarian can really ultimately decide if it's the right choice for your dog. Remember, too, that if your veterinarian does decide to prescribe adequate canine, to go ahead and discuss any possible side effects, such as a hypersensitivity to the drug's active ingredient. And adequate canine should not be used in dogs with a known or suspected bleeding disorder, and it should be used with caution in dogs with a renal or hepatic impairment. Ladies, you've been very great advocates for this on National Dog Day. Kristen, if they wanted to get some more information, is there a place online for them? Absolutely. If you want to learn more about arthritis in general and all the treatment options available, you can visit caninearthritis.org.
Uh, you can actually also visit adequincanine.com or you can call 1-800-458-0163 where you can request a full copy of Adequin Canine's prescribing information. Shaw and Meredith Khan, thank you for being my guest on this special day. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com. <laughs>